Hey gang, today we're going to have a look at this really interesting and somewhat mysterious knife. This is a pretty large fixed blade knife. It's obviously a bit different to something that I'd usually be carrying. This has been sent in by a very long time viewer for me to have a look at and review of. So this is like your Tom Brown Tracker-esque proper survival knife. Almost a little bit of an 80s sort of feel to it if you're looking and uh, hold it and all that sort of business. It's very sort of hard work, hard using, but also kind of um, old fashioned in a way as well. It's made in Spain and this is the Aitor Oso Negro. Uh, that's just the uh, rear end. So it's uh, got a brass pommel at the back and a brass guard at the front. They're obviously painted black because this is the Negro version. Uh, the Bianco version is the one without all the um, the black wash on it. So it's a plastic handle there. It's like a knurled, pretty rough plastic. And that guard is formed and fused pretty well onto the plastic as well. I do believe it is a stick tang running through to that hex bolt there. And it forms a pretty comfortable grip uh, when you have it in hand. And you can also obviously reverse it like that as well. The combating nature of this knife can't really be understated. It's pretty blatant that it's got a pretty uh, like a kukri-ish type quality to it that you know you're either going to be into or you're not going to be into at all. So it's got a seven inch total blade. It's a pretty severe looking clip point. It's got a saw back and it's obviously got a heck of a recurve there with all of the weights sort of ending up in that front swooped type belly there. I hope you like all your specs all at once because that is what you're getting right there and then. I'll get back to that steel coated chrome over later on. Just some comparisons, the Gerber Strongarm is that one there, it's a 5 inch blade, a little bit shorter, another great robust little knife, that's the uh, Falkniven S1, sort of similar, uh, and again sort of similar thickness as well, um, that's kind of just shorter on the blade, but probably about as strong as, as this big beastie here. That's it with the Falkniven A1, which is a little bit shorter, but is probably a little bit more robust as well, owing to it does not have the hollow grind that this knife has. Those are the spines, they've both got that sort of 3 sixteenths um, inch thick. I think the Falkniven is a little bit bigger, maybe, maybe 5 millimeters, whereas this one's 4.8. So not a huge deal. This sawback, this isn't actually a terrible sawback, it actually kind of works. I'll show you on some wood right now. So as you see, it goes a lot deeper than most of these sawback knives do. It still ends up kind of stopping once you get to the blade, simply because it doesn't taper down like a proper saw does. However, it really does rip and shred a lot better than pretty much any other sawback I've had. And if you do steer it around, you can probably make a cut through most, most wood, I would suggest. I mean, this factory wood stuff's pretty simple, so it might be harder on living sappy stuff that might bind those teeth up, but... It's not a horrible back saw. Myself, not my kind of knife in terms of how it looks and having back saws on my knives, never essential to me. But yeah, it still does the job and it's not terrible. It's actually pretty okay. Uh, being a kukri shaped knife, this does chop pretty well as well. It actually chops very well. It chops probably better than most other survival knives I've had, mainly owing to that belly. Of course, we're going to do some splitting. We're going to split this bloody half fossilized redwood stuff that I've pinched off my father-in-law for a, um, a firewood test. And this is actually what I often do with my fixed blade knives when I used to live out in the country. This exact wood, this redwood stuff, it's really, really quite knotty and dense, burns for ages, brilliant stuff. And this is what I would do with my mantelpiece. Uh, well, not on my mantelpiece, but on my hearth below my mantelpiece, I had a, a wooden platform and I would split wood into kindling using, it was an Ontario SP8 machete, but Still, same kind of work, and this one does the work just fine. Actually, it does it very, very well indeed, especially for a hollow ground knife. I think it's owing to probably the steel being softer, which I will talk about a bit later on, but it's actually a really good performing hollow grind, especially, I guess, because it graduates pretty quickly to that flat ground shoulder. Never going to win any Iron Chef awards with a fine edge on this one. It is quite thick behind the edge, despite being a hollow grind, but... When push comes to shove, it'll do its job. And this is before I resharpen it to get it done. So this is the uh, workshop edge that uh, Killer Deegan had when he sent it to me. So, uh, And it does fine. You know, it's not too bad at all. And you don't have to worry about the orange juice rusting it up because it is a stainless alloy of steel. Now, versus wood, does really well. It's no problems at all. Wood isn't terribly hard on the edge 
of knives, even with harder woods like this, it's usually you're going with the ply, like not against it. So you're kind of just stripping off leaves of wood when you do this kind of um, technique with a knife. So, and this one's not too bad at it. Kind of awkward due to that giant guard, that fightery kind of guard. You do have to kind of hop over that. Not the most comfortable in the world, but you can definitely get work done. It's, um, you know, it's fine. I do find that it's the recurve is good once you get used to it and you know how to use it. I'd still prefer not to have a recurve. I just don't, I don't see how it improves it that much. Another thing you can do, because this is a really strong and stout knife, you can just hammer it into your stump and you can just do pull cuts. See that? Just shave that wood off like that. That's a lot. That's even bloody safer than doing your um, your whittling with your hands. You just stick it in there and pull away, and you've got the edge facing away from you. You can do that for days. It's um, really quite simple. You might have to hammer your knife back in every so often, but really cool little technique, and it let me get up, you know, a fair handful of shavings in just a couple of minutes. So no worries at all there. Like overall, I think this is a pretty good do-all knife. It's probably not to my usual tastes, but yeah, I wouldn't have any qualms in being stuck out with this blade because I think as long as you're using it just against wood, it's gonna be absolutely fine. It's certainly tough. If it can split through that wood, it can split through most wood, I'd suggest. Due to its recurve, when it comes to sharpening, I would recommend using a belt system such as the WorkSharp. So what I did, I did sharpen it. I sharpened it after all my use, and then just thinking about the specs, I went on the knife center side, just confirmed the specs, and they're sticking by that CRMOVA stainless steel, and my steel knowledge kind of says that Unless they say exactly what it is, it's probably not the best stuff in the world. That's very, very vague. That's three elements that is in most steels, chromium, molybdenum, and vanadium. Like, I'm suggesting it's probably just a 440 type steel, but to make sure, I sharpened it up on the uh, workshop belt. I didn't use the kitchen knife guide. I used the outdoor edge guide, but I still got a hair shaving sharp. I won't be including these results in my knife testing um, chart though, because I put an outdoor edge on it to return it to its owner. Got shaving sharp though, and then when I went to start cutting all the rope, well, let's just watch and see. A very awkward knife due to the rope cutting test. This is why I'm generally just using the fixed blade knives. Not looking forward to the K-Bar BK7, which is happening in the next couple of days. But it went 25 times through until it absolutely just wouldn't get through anymore. So I'm guessing it's some nature of uh, 440, 400 series type steel, 440A or B, something similar to that. This is a Spanish-made knife, and I have noticed that they'll sell really well-made knives in those parts of the world without being too bothered about the flashness of the steel, which is interesting to me. However, um... You know, I've had Miguel Nieto knives, which I know are quite expensive knives, and they use this AN58 steel, which is basically just 440C. Like, it's just not a concern of that area of the market for some reason, which I guess is fine. They've got their, perhaps, purity of design. They know it's just a big wood speeder knife, so maybe they're not too fussed. Maybe they know against wood, even the 440Bs of the world are going to do fine. So that's the only thing you've got to know. If you're going to be using this as, like, a everything knife is your urban knife, cutting rope and stuff, it's going to go dull pretty quick. But as a big woods bashing beastie, kind of like a Tom Brown tracker light maybe, you probably couldn't do far wrong by picking one of these up. The price is going to be about 125 bucks in the US, uh, about 180 in Australia. That's probably getting a bit towards the high side just when I'm thinking about that steel. However, in terms of its overall structure and integrity, it's actually a really well-made, really strong knife. And although I've never seen it before, apparently in parts of Europe, this is kind of like their K-Bar. So there's people who really kind of revere this knife. And there's actually a massive clone industry for this blade here. Yeah, it's really funny, the knives that they clone. I'm always really um, mystified, especially when you get your random Spydercos and things like your Spyderco Persians and stuff like that, that you'd be surprised that someone would bother cloning. But this is in that club, the clone club. And you need to do a bit of research before you... Um, you pick one of these up, make sure you just buy it from a reputable dealer. I think this one was bought from a reputable Australian dealer. I talked to the uh, person who sold it, uh, sent it here, but um, just make sure you, you look in the right place because you want brass for those guards and pommels rather than bloody, you know, crappy 3CR steel or something like that. That's probably the, the, problem, the main problem we'd be having as well as just the overall integrity. Apparently the uh, counterfeit ones are welded too rather than stick tanged all the way through and fastened with that bolt on the end. 
So it's going to be a knife for you or not for you. Uh, I've enjoyed using it and playing around with it. I probably wouldn't buy one of these myself, but I do thank you, Killer Deegan, very much for sending it through. And I'll see you all in the next video. Bye now.